We're in the lounge at the Venice Airport getting ready to board our first flight with Peyton Lee. She's ready to go. She's trying to talk and tell us about it. <laughs> so far so good. Little Peyton's asleep. Here's hoping. And we just see that fastened until the aircraft comes to a halt and the fastened seatbelt sign turns off. Dun, dun, dun. We remind you that all portable electronic laptops switched off for the aircraft doors are actually passed out right here. Be careful when opening the overhead lockers. Hey, we're in Paris. We made it to the loo. It's beautiful here. Here's the entrance. Glass pyramid. Also in the famous cinematic film, Edge of Tomorrow. Peyton, you ready for your first full day in Paris? Did you see the sights and Peyton's pretty excited about it too. She's all dressed up for her first day in Paris. She actually loves Paris. Well, now that she's going to. Hi. So we're inside the mall part of the loop. It's really cool. And then behind us, we found this upside down pyramid that kind of mirrors the pyramid outside. Down. Hold it up. Our tour guide is figuring out where to go now. Peyton's very helpful. So our goal is to get to the Mona Lisa here. It's our first priority. We're on our way. This is the room of all the Roman architecture, or Roman statues, excuse me. They all look very similar to what we saw in Rome. The Wing Victory is um, this beautiful statue that was supposed to go off the bow of ships and it was built during Hellenistic period, somewhere between 330 and 30 BC. Amazing how old it is and the detail even before David's Michelangelo, so 1500 years before David's Michelangelo. Yeah. So we're walking through the Grand Hall right now. It is gorgeous and filled with all these fantastic pieces of art. It's the length of three football fields. So I remember coming here 15 years ago, and my dad thought this painting back here was probably the most impressive one in the Louvre. It looks like almost 20 feet tall and like 40 feet wide. It's called the Wedding of Cana. And you see all these like crazy things going on, and in the very center with the red sash, you can see Jesus up, about right there. But for some reason, this one behind us is the one that's a little bit more known. This tiny little painting back in there. There we go, lines aren't too, too crazy. So here we are at the Mona Lisa, and it was made by Leonardo da Vinci. Yep, he brought it with him when he moved to France. It was one of um, like four or five paintings that he brought with him from Italy at the time. And the king, uh, Francis I, um, fell in love with it, so he made it the centerpiece of all of his artwork. We're still trying to figure out if she's smiling or if she's grimacing. Serious, though. Sarah says she's smiling. Yeah, she's smiling. We solved it. Here we are at the coronation of Napoleon by David Jacques Louis in 1725. It's really interesting because you can see that Napoleon had just grabbed the crown out of the Pope's hand. Usually the Pope was the one who coronated the next emperor or king. I um, that. Yeah, and the Pope looks pretty ticked off so, in the painting. Napoleon thought the only one worthy of crowning, crowning himself emperor was is himself. Pure della Franzca, 1450 by Bergali de Doni. It's in 1446. Some of Leonardo's other paintings. We have John the Baptist over here and then Jesus on the ground there. It's a little baby. Here's another one, Da Vinci's works, not... Okay, so here's another Da Vinci, the one with St. Anne, Mary, and Jesus, and Jesus is playing with the lambs down there, and the lamb symbolizes Jesus' soon sacrifice as the lamb of the world. This is another famous Raphael, translates to the beautiful gardener, and it's Mary, Jesus and John the Baptist. John the Baptist is in the posture of worship for Jesus in the garden. Giovanni Panini. This is a gallery in Rome. You can see how the late Renaissance, how they're so obsessed with the Greek culture. You don't know which one's like the actual painting and which one's the actual building they're in. By Gubin Rini. 
1639. Here's Delacroix's painting, symbolizing the French Revolution and freedom. I have all the songs for Les Mis stuck in my head right now. Napoleon through Russia. The Gallery de Apollo. Pottery from Crete. So these are frescoes by Botticelli. If you look at this, we'll show you in a few minutes when we go downstairs to the Parthenon remains. But it's actually, it looks very similar to just like a color version of one of the reliefs of the Parthenon. Botticelli also designed the dome in Florence. St. Francis of Assisi painting. It was made circa 1290. And uh, you can see St. Francis was in prayer, contemplating Jesus and Jesus. Um, and they appeared and according to, to, to tradition, seared St. Francis with the same marks that he And this is called the stigmata. So Jesus has lasers and wings. Yeah. Here's Athena. And Sarah knows all about it because... I did an 8th grade project on Athena. She's the goddess of wisdom and war. Along here behind me, you can see, are a lot of the reliefs taken from the Parthenon. So they, use all of this to decorate the temple. Venus de Milo. From around 100 BC, sorry. Um, and she's basically just like the perfect balance of everything. Like you split her down the middle, she's balanced on each side. She's resting on her right leg, which is the culture of most I believe is what it's called, but it's a really famous style of um, Sculptures where they have them just resting on their right leg with their left leg in motion, ready to go where they're going. We're from the island of Milo. It was discovered in 1820. And coming out of the Louvre, there's this high end mall. We have an Apple store. Apple store. Leaving the Louvre. We're on our way to Versailles. So we're going from the first palace to the next. To the new one. To the new palace. You can see Notre Dame back here. The which way are we going here? Right there. Over there. On the train, heading to Versailles. A little Peyton Lee. 